the commitment stage. Stage four out of the five stages of a relationship, and it's exciting because all the work that you put in place of going through the honeymoon phase of the oogly googly eyes and that person could do nothing wrong and you start to blur your boundaries to the power struggle phase, which is just like, oh, my policies and what I do is right. No, my policies, what I do is right. We need, I have control of this, I need to have control. And then it's all power struggle to the stability phase is like, okay, all right. You're actually a flawed individual. I'm a flawed individual. Can we see a way to make sure that we can take our flaws and our strengths together to produce solutions, to provide some stability to the commitment stage? With those three phases there, all that was really built in place to kind of keep that flame that was lit, nurtured and throw in some twigs, make it get bigger and bigger. But when you get to the commitment stage, when you start to make a decision, yes or no, when you make that yes, you're in the commitment stage and now you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor and the work that you put in place to get into this area. So it's, it's great. And then we have the co-creation stage, which is at the end. But before I go into more detail about the commitment stage, let's talk about myself. I, I, I've done a lot of, not, not talk about myself, but I wanna give you a little bit about myself. I mean, I have my doctor, my master's. I have taught at multiple universities. I have done businesses, I have done different real estate, owned an apartment complex. I've done a lot of different things, right? So basically I wanna make sure you understand that because I, I like to do the research and I have an uncanny ability to take information and actually explain that to other people in a way that it's digestible, even complex topics. And so I, I break that down into this channel. We have relationship, parenting, personal growth, and attachment theory. And so I do all this really for my daughter. Uh, if you can see her over here, over here. Um, but I do it for her to actually give a roadmap for her so she can have everything there for her if she ever needs it. Um, but before, let's go into the commitment stage. I'm gonna go into a little bit of background of the commitment stage, but then we're gonna go into some pitfalls to kind of worry, worry about because you think commitment, all oh, things all good, not so easy. And then also, and not so fast, but then we're gonna go into the, the tips to kind of stay in the, in the commitment stage and find ways to move into the next stage, which is the co-creation and bliss stage. Let's go. The commitment stage, and this is a very wonderful stage because it's you have a good balance of love, compassion, security, passion, fun, freedom, all that, and you've gone through all this rigmarole of finding that attractive person and being connected with them emotionally to fighting each other out, trying to figure out who has power to realizing they both are flawed individuals and see if you can work together to get to the potential commitment stage where you start to say, do I stay or do I go? And this is basically what that, that's, that is. You know, I'm gonna take you with your flaws, no matter what it is. I don't need you, but I choose you. And, and I'll choose you when it's good or bad, because I understand even if it's bad, we can figure out a way to get it to good, which you've learned from the stability phase. And then if it's good, you can high rise that just like you learned in the honeymoon phase. But this is um, usually a very stable, stable stage. And a lot of times when people get in this stage because they verbalize commitment, then they're usually pretty good, but there are ways to set this back. Let's talk about some, some potential downfalls before we go on some tips to maintain in this and move over into the happy, bliss, co-creation stage. What are the pitfalls and, pitfalls and the tips that you can actually do to actually stay in the commitment stage and also beyond? And one of the biggest pitfalls is gonna be laziness, right? So people forget about the romance. And what happens is they think, oh my God, we got commitment. Person says they're gonna be with me forever. Good, whoo, man, I'm good. But you forget to do what you were doing before that commitment stage, continuing it after the commitment stage. And so what happens is you start to focus on other things is when you have stability and nothing really going on, like there's no fighting as much, there's like the person committed to, your, abund your abandonment wounds are not being triggered. You sometimes forget to nurture what you needed to nurture. And so that can also cause problems, even though that commitment stage is woven pretty tight. But if you don't nurture that in, in emotionally, physically, and also um, in other ways that you feel important for the relationship, it will untangle and, and break off. Things are to do that is really just to, when you think about that person, try to do something for them and try to do one of the five love languages. I have a great video on explaining that if you don't already know that yourself, but trying to do something that act of love to show that, you know what, I'm thinking about you and I care about you. Keep that romance alive, date nights, etc., etc. Number two, lack of growth. They can be really hard because when you get all that stability and nothing going on, you can kind of get kind of boring. So trying to find ways to maybe travel together, learn like I do like a relationship seminar, 
um, really find ways to grow together so you have more things to talk about, you're working things out, but also it helps you give you a venue where you're talking and communicating together to get to know more what's going on in the individual lives. Number three, the changes are coming. Changes are coming. Changes are coming. Changes are coming. Now, so the changes are coming because with stability phase, you kind of are kind of just trying to test things out, but when the commitment stage, it kind of gets starts to, to pile on. Moving in the house together, having kids, how to raise the situation, how to do budgeting and all this stuff. Everything starts to be a lot of changes happen at once. But depending how well you did in the stability phase of keeping and realizing how to find that balance when things came and how you learn how depth you've, you got those roots into the ground so the winds doesn't take the tree away will depend on how easy the commitment stage will be from handling those changes from coming. Continue doing the same things you were doing before, leaving space, no conversational killers, communicating in a healthy way to allow using individuals to move forward down the road. And lastly, <clears throat> sacrificing personal goals, all right? You gotta prioritize yourself. I mean, even though the relationship's important, you kinda have to remember you, you're growing in your own journey to yourself. And if you don't focus on what's going on here, sometimes you can get lost in a relationship and then you, your subconscious will resent some of the things that you want to be done yourself. And then now the relationship suffers anyways because of that. <clears throat> so prioritizing your own time, which also doing things on your own can also can help with communication about what's going on and, and, and more communication in the relationship by just doing things differently. Just make sure when you prioritize, prioritize things of, of personal time that's within the constraints of the healthiness of the relationship so the relationship doesn't, doesn't break down, right? So those are the four things, tips and things that can you want to stay in the stability, the commitment stage or how to help move it along into the co-creation stage. So it's going to be the final thoughts. All right. And before we go into the final thoughts, please like and subscribe. I did a lot of work on understanding this and I feel like this is huge. I've, it's so good. Attachment theory is so huge and a lot of different things are so great on this channel, but I didn't realize how much understanding this process could be so beneficial to individuals. So please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you did like and didn't like. You'll see in the comments the honeymoon phase, the stability phase, and also the power struggle phase to get that background too. But but please like and subscribe. But the next is like the, this, the commitment stage is a great stage to be in. A lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of freedom, and it's, it's constantly trying to work on the relationship and yourself at the same time. But it's a lot more peace. You get to really enjoy the warmth of the, of the relationship because of the work you put in in the previous three stages. So um, enjoy the commitment stage, and then we're gonna do the co-creation and bliss stage next. And then after this, I may do the attachment styles and how they affect each one of these um, these stages but until we do that please as i in almost of my i should try to do all of them but all of my videos if you have kids slow down and love them give them a hug just like in the commitment stage we talked about just nurturing that relationship even though they know they love you they need to hear it on a consistent basis so there's no question in doubt that they're loved but also told that they're worthy no matter what they do because they're in your life they have made you become better and because of that mentality, this is how I look at it, that person already met that require, requirement of being worthy. And it will help make them have more confidence for themselves and belief in themselves and not let other people take advantage of them without those understandings for themselves. So until next time, I'll see you when I see you.